In today's video, the science of building muscle and getting lean and what you need to know about it. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com. In today's video, I want to talk about three very different pieces of information. We're going to talk about some research that goes into muscle building and body fat loss that has had a profound impact on those around us. In fact, I reached out to two of my friends and I asked them, what was one piece of information that kind of shaped their career or that they thought had the most impact on nutrition and training? And so we're going to talk about those pieces of advice along with one study that I read that has had the probably the most impact on the things that I do and see and that I'm interested in. And I want to give all you guys this information as well as link this stuff below so that you can look into it because if you're as curious as I am, well, you'd like to know more. And I'd also like to explain a little bit about how we come up with decisions. You see studies and research and these papers that are written help kind of guide us in where we should go next and looking for answers because we're still figuring out how you can put on the most muscle, how you can get lean, how you can avoid body fat regain, how can we just be the best possible versions of ourselves. And so the first person I reached out to was Dr. Mike Zordos, who is a teacher at Florida Atlantic University, who has been studying power and hypertrophy in his lab. Mike is actually the person that I first heard talk about daily undulating periodization and as a method to get power lifters and strength athletes at their peak. And so when I asked Mike what would be his number one piece of research that has helped shape him, I know he's got so much behind it, okay? Because not only is he currently doing research, he's involved in it himself, literally uses himself as a case study, but he's also got MASS, the Monthly Application and Strength Sport, which is a monthly publication that he puts out, I'll link below, along with Eric Helms and Greg Knuckles, where they review current literature. So who better to ask about current literature or the best research out there than Dr. Zordos? So Mike actually brought up a study by Flynn and some other colleagues that talked about muscle damage and muscle remodeling. And what was interesting about this study is that they looked at two possible kind of connections between being really sore and muscle growth or perhaps doing the same amount of work without getting the soreness. So for these two groups, they had them take a different approach, but the total work done for both groups was the same. They basically took one group and induced a lot of delayed onset muscle soreness, muscle damage. They set them up so that they were taking on more intensity and more training than they were used to. I think the idea behind a lot of this was this idea that if you go in the gym and you're not sore after, that you did not get a good workout. Well, interestingly enough, what this study showed us was that muscle damage was not a great indicator. In fact, the two groups, the group that didn't get muscle damage and the group that did, had the same results. Meaning, the group that did not have as much soreness but did an equal amount of work made just as much progress. So that tells us that perhaps being sore and being so beat up is not a great indicator of a great workout. And this is something that, you know, as a coach of athletes, I'm not looking for people to kind of destroy themselves each time, but I found it very interesting that this is kind of something that Dr. Zordos has been using to guide him. And of the two groups, one group was given a three week introductory period where they gradually worked up to their work capacity. This allowed them to avoid this very difficult period of muscle soreness or muscle damage because they were gradually increased. And I think this is something that we can learn from. And that's what's exciting when I talk to people like Dr. Zordos is where do they come from? What, what is their background? Because they're the ones that are doing the research that's helping guide us into this next generation. So I'm going to link that study below. Be sure to check it out. Now, the next person I reached out to, Dr. Brett Contreras, for everyone that doesn't know Dr. Brett, well, he is a PhD in exercise physiology who focuses on the glutes. He's known as the glute guy. He's got a lab in San Diego called the Glute Lab. Just came out with a book called the Glute Lab. It's behind me. Brett is one of the people that is doing some amazing research. Research. He's involved in research. He's actually a practitioner of this as well. Not only does he lift weights and is very big and strong, but he coaches many people that do it as well. And he's got a lab 
a gym in San Diego specifically designed around this, and he brought up a study by Brad Schoenfeld. Now this paper by Brad Schoenfeld from 2010 is called The Mechanisms of Muscle Hypertrophy and Their Application in Resistance Training. So the idea is Brad broke down everything that goes into putting on muscle. He talks about the types of muscle hypertrophy. He talks about hormones and their role. He talks about things like exercise selection, mechanical tension, muscle damage, and metabolic stress. And he goes in depth into even what we can do within our workouts, things like rest periods, training periodization. But this is a all-in-one look at what it takes to build muscle. And he gives some real-world applications into what might be the best approach to take to build muscle over our careers. And I'm gonna link that below. And this is something that you take someone like Brett, who is a leader in our industry, a thought leader, and you look at where he gets his ideas from, and it's somebody like Brad Schoenfeld who is putting out tons of amazing research right now. But this is where you can get into the mind of what's going on. And you can also start to make sense of things that we hear. You hear this, you hear that, but Really the most powerful thing is when we can make decisions for ourselves and figure these things out for ourselves or find a resource that we trust because we know they're putting a lot of time and effort in and that's exactly what bread is to me. And so what I'd like to talk about next is something that's had an impact on me directly. Now the Minnesota starvation experiment which took place in 1944, 1945, well, it wouldn't even be able to be done. Now, before you get too worried, they didn't starve anybody. But basically, what they did was they took 36 men, put them in a metabolic ward for 24 weeks, and they lost 25% of their body weight. So, if you think about a 200-pound man, that means they would be 150 pounds by the end of this. As you can see, this is a lot of weight. Now, these were not obese individuals. Those, these were people from everyday walks of life. And what they were trying to just figure out is how to handle people that were put in situations where they had extreme starvation for long periods of time. Now, they were actually taking in 1,500 calories. So it's not as if they were starving, but they did have to perform kind of manual labor and stuff. So what happened psychologically and physiologically to these men has shaped so much of the thinking that goes into how we approach things. It's helped us learn about metabolic adaptations. It's helped us learn about the psychology of dieting, how we can become food focused. It's helped us delve deep into the mind and the body of someone who is so low in body fat and so low in calories that it's well below what's normal. Okay, And this is what we can kind of guide ourselves in when we're talking about competition prep. In a contest prep phase, we're gonna deal with things psychologically. We're gonna deal with things physiologically. And so something like this experiment that was done in the 40s that cannot be duplicated because a review board would not allow these practices to be done again, there's a lot that can be taken away from here. There were people that were in this study that actually left after and became chefs. They got that food focus that they literally changed careers. Okay, so this is the type of stuff. These are the type of studies and research and papers that help guide us. Now what I could possibly do in the future is do a video specifically about these papers and these studies because I feel like there's too much information to just address here. But I wanted to give you three of the most powerful pieces of research and papers and information and exercise science and nutrition and training that's helped shape where we are. And hopefully I've done that today. You guys look these over. Let me know what you think. And you know what? Comment below if you've seen an article, read some research, or looked at something that has changed or shaped the way you think. I would love to see where this goes. Maybe I can do a review of that information. Maybe it's something I haven't seen yet. It would be wonderful to get this discussion started. All right, guys, I hope you're having an awesome Monday. I gotta get back to work. It's Monday after all. But thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.